Setting Old Republic at the start of the Final War, a smuggler's den in Sith Empire territory on an unregulated mid rim planet. Whispers of the Force by Unsettled Ash, Chapter 1. The guy you're looking for is going to be over there in the corner. Are you sure it's him? asked the rogue figure. Yes, trust me, he's pretty infamous around these parts, but good luck cause him to be pretty picky about requests. He doesn't like all the attention, so if you're lucky, you might have caught him at a good time. Well, is this a good time? No. He doesn't like to be bothered when he's out for a drink. Excellent! Nothing better than good news. Lugan trudged on regardless of the newly acquired information. All that mattered was that after three months of searching, he could finally report back to the council with good news. This was likely the twelfth smuggler's den he had paid for information on how to locate and was sure both the Republic and the Jedi Council were beginning to grow very, very tired of his liberal uses of their funds. Lugan didn't mind being sent on missions away from the Council. He truly did enjoy the freedom he got to experience away from the Temple on Coruscant. The Masters always preached the importance of listening to the Force, but when it came down to it, they always seemed to be the one in his ear. Out here, spacefaring the last couple months, he had never felt so connected with the Force being free of bureaucratic politics that holds the council down from. Lugan stopped his walk halfway across the room and looked into the mirror across the bar. Lugan stopped his walk across the room and looked into the mirror across the bar. He doesn't look much like himself since he set off. His white robe was now tarnished and now he discolored off-white through his travels. He'd grown a beard now and barely recognized his more civilized self. He's 28 but looks like he's 33. All this thinking of freeing the Order from the Republic was beginning to plague his thoughts. At this point, he couldn't tell if it was homesickness or all the spice he has inhaled since entering this trash heap. Hold it together, Lugan. Think of all the good the Order does through the Republic and their galactic network. Hey, buddy. There's no one talking to you. I think it's time you laid off the glitter stem. I think the spice is starting to make you hallucinate a bit. Lugan let his head hang for a moment. He really needed a quality refresher. Being mistaken for a spice head was an all-time low for his new look. Or, if you needed something to keep you going, I'm sure I could help you round back. The smuggler shot him a crooked smile while Lugan trudged on ignoring the generous offer. Fine then. When he come down from that high voice, you'll be right back here. Lugan squeezed past some crowded tables and apologized as he bumped past a couple drunks on his journey to the darkest corner of the room. He approached a table situated far off from the others to avoid as much noise and light as possible. A pair of legs under a dim light, only bright enough to illuminate a pair of armored legs, a wooden table, and a half-filled mug of Arcanian sweet milk. As he reached the dark corner, a hand emerged from the darkness to retrieve the mug, as a shrouded figure could be heard downing the rest of his drink before peace was finally disturbed. Once the loud gulp to stop, Lugan took another step forward make himself peer down into the darkness as he reached out into the forest to read his elusive prey. Say what you want so I can say no and go about my business. The dark corner that spoke had a raspy voice with very little enthusiasm. Lugan relaxed a bit as he noted the dusty corner and muttering the cracks in the wall. Sorry to disturb your... Struggling to find the right words as to not offend him. Humble abode. But I'm here on Republic business. The sound of a blaster and holstering doesn't go unnoticed as he narrows his eyes, focusing more intently in the forest, not feeling any immediate danger. I'm in need of your services and my long travels tells me, hands where I can see them. Now. A second blaster, just as shiny as the first one, emerges from the dark corner. The shrouded figure motions with the right blaster to see what Lugan had been holding in his sleeves. Nice and slow. I trust smugglers more than I trust a Republic official. At least I know they're looking to stab me in the back first chance they get. Lugan slowly reveals his lightsaber he had hidden in his sleeve. But do you trust the Jedi? Suddenly, the figure stands up no longer covered in darkness as to reveal his Mandalorian helmet as Lugan notices one of the blasters is no longer pointed at him, but instead pointed at a group of men seated at the nearest table. One of them, an Ithorian with his hands inside his vest, looks to the other side of the room. What's a Republic dog doing in Imperial Sith space? And why is he meeting with Trophim of all people? Worry not. I'm only here to talk. I don't... 
The authorian cut him off again, speaking loud at this time, as the rest of the bar began to quiet down as everyone was now listening to this news that quickly sobered them up. I think we're going to need a damn good answer as to who leaked this place to the Republic. Trophim, are you a criffing spy for the Republic? He here to give you Republic credits? Sensing the situation turning for the worst, Lugan extended his force presence throughout the room in an attempt to calm the inebriated crowd. Please understand, this place is still a well-kept secret. No one knows how to get here other than the people in this room. A rodian across the room chimed in with a vile tone full of hatred. And he worked hard to keep it this way. If we want to keep it this way, then we should make sure the Republic dogs find his stay comfortable. Trophim takes a step closer to Lugan. Stop talking. You aren't helping. To the rest of you, I have no business with him or the Republic. Trophim shoulders past Lugan, but only makes a few steps before he's being grabbed by the Adorian. Trophim stops dead in his tracks. Take your hand off, Kellax, or I'm taking it with me as a souvenir. The Smuggler's Guild has rules, Trophim, and you just broke the biggest one. Now the rest of us have to uphold the second one. Lugan becoming increasingly anxious as the force is screaming at him due to the imminent danger all around him. Still attempting to peacefully talk his way out of this, Lugan interjects. Uh, truly, I am sorry. Maybe I can join the guild. Lugan spins, igniting his lightsaber, knocking the blast bolt aimed back at the shooter. Suddenly, the sound of more blasters escaping their holster begins to sound across the room. Duck! Trophin screams through his visor, raising his arm as a stream of fire spews from his wrist across the room. Lugan can smell the burning flesh amidst the screams of all the smugglers being burned alive. The room was now half ablaze, however, the fire wouldn't last long as the building wasn't made of flammable material. Lugan extended his hands, pushing with the force, clearing flaming debris and bodies. Lunging forward while the flames were clear, he looked over the shoulder to see Trophim not far behind. On the other side of the flames were many more angry guild members, raising a blaster to them. He deflected bolts as best he could, trying to protect himself as he raced towards the exit. He wasn't worried about Trophim. His armor looked like Beskar, and if it was, he didn't have to worry much. Lugan batted bolts away and ducked under the chair, being swung his way. Trophim, on the other hand, barreled through the chair and the human male swinging it. They were almost at the door when Lugan felt pins and needles in the side of his face. He looked to his right to see as a Brock holding a thermal detonator. Trophim tackled Lugan over the counter. They both scrambled back up to see the detonator hurled towards him like a fastball. Lugan put up his hands to push it away using the force, but somehow, Trophim reacted faster with pinpoint accuracy he shot the detonator out of the air. The explosion caught everyone in the room. Luckily, those behind cover were mostly shell-shocked and won't be hearing anything other than a loud ringing in their ear for a while. Lugan and Trophim, on the other hand, were close enough that even when still behind cover, they felt the worst of it. Getting up from the cold metal floor, Lugan felt as if his entire body had been trampled. Groaning as he rolled over, he saw the bartender who sought shelter behind the counter with them was likely unconscious. Hopefully he had the funds to cover the damage. Or maybe the guilt did. Lugan was now on one knee, drawing in the force to recover his senses. After a moment, he got up still groaning. Leaning on the counter, he was still shell-shocked as he was seeing double. Lugan rubbed his eyes and started stumbling outside for some fresher air. The dust was still settling from the blast. Now outside, with a better grip of the aftermath, there were others outside unconscious or recovering, but no Trophim. Beskar or not, he couldn't have been in much better of a condition than him. A smuggler stumbled out of the smoke, coughing uncontrollably. The smuggler let out a few more coughs before turning and squinting at Lugan. Lugan had seen that look a few times since he started his journey. Without another word, Lugan turned and sprinted for the port as the shouting began to grow more and more behind him. One way or another, Lugan knew the fastest way out of here was the nearby port, and that was his best shot at catching up the Trophim.